Welcome to Pavenars, webinars for the pavement community. Today I'm very briefly going to talk about the use of recycling agents with RAS and RAP asphalt mixtures. And this is all coming from NCHRP Report 927. Now before we get into the details of the effects of high RAP and RAS binder ratios, it's nice to look at some data, and in 2019, the National Asphalt Pavement Association, or NAPA, states that 89.2 million tons of RAP, or reclaimed asphalt pavement, was used in the United States, and just under 1 million tons of RAS, or recycled asphalt shingles, was used in the United States. And the use of these two recycled materials led to approximately $3.3 billion in savings, and that includes both asphalt binder and aggregate material costs of savings. However, there are concerns about using high RAP and RAS in mixtures. That includes material variability of the RAP and the RAS, the long-term performance of these mixtures, the fact that you're putting a much stiffer binder into your asphalt mixture, and there is a more complicated mix design. And all of these are a little amplified when we have these higher recycled binder ratios, or RBRs. And when we say higher, we mean in the 0.3 to 0.5 range. And you can see here the definition of the recycled binder ratio is simply the binder content of the wrap multiplied by the percentage of wrap used, added to the binder content of the RAS multiplied by the percentage of RAS used, and you divide all of that by 100 times the total asphalt binder content. Now there are three mitigation techniques available if we're using high RAP and RAS binder ratios, and that includes simply increasing the overall asphalt binder content so you would have a higher binder content. You can use softer binders when adding to the RAP and RAS, and you can also use recycling agents or chemical additives. I do want to note NCHRP 927 had a very strong field component and explored multiple practical tools, but those won't be covered here because instead we're going to focus on laboratory asphalt binder and asphalt mix testing. They did a plethora of tests with a multitude of materials, and that included looking at recycling agent dose selections chemical compatibility between the asphalt binders and the recycling agents, various asphalt binder tests, various asphalt mixture tests, and they also performed extensive aging protocols. There were several key findings, and that includes when you have a high BRB binder blend, you want to make sure that you also explore long-term aging. And this is so you have compatibility and oxidation responses available to you. So if you're looking to use these high BRBs, then you need to also look at long-term aging in order to explore the compatibility and oxidation response. From an asphalt binder perspective, you want to look at the high temperature performance grade for high temperature properties, or PGH. For intermediate temperature, you can either look at T Delta 45 or the Glover Robe parameter. And then for low temperatures, they recommend using the Delta TC parameter. And they provided a suggested performance threshold for these three parameters in the report. Here is the suggested performance threshold for the asphalt mixture tests. And you can see they have high temperature testing, which included loaded wheel testing and they recommend you look at the N12.5 for that. Intermediate temperature, you can see we have the Glover Row mixture and the flexibility index. And then for low temperature, you have the BBR mixture, both the S sub M and the M value sub M, and also the confined low temperature tests where you get the CRI environmental. That's a very brief overview of NCHRP Report 927. If you're interested in learning more, here is the full citation, which can be found below along with the DOI.